I'm a 22 year old virgin and this is why. The lights like went dim and like everything like slowed down and I was just like, yes. I am calm, I am ready to take this on. I don't give a shit, cut me open, bitch. I said, all right, Alexis, you're gonna breathe in real deep for me, real deep. And I was just like, hi guys, it's Allie. And today I'm gonna be talking to you guys about my surgery that I had about a year ago actually a little over a year ago now I know by the title you're probably wondering um what is that and why are you telling that for the whole world to see isn't that kind of personal shouldn't that be kind of your business while that is true I also wanted to share my experience because this is probably like the biggest thing that has ever really happened to me in like my adult life and I figured it would help others out there who are like me, who don't understand what's going on with their body. Let's say a girl's going through what I went through and she's just like like so scared and nervous, just, just doesn't know what to do. And then she stumbles across this video and she's like, oh, so I'm not alone. When I was going through all of this for many, many years, I felt like I was broken. I felt like I was alone. Basically, the surgery that I had was called a hymenectomy. Yes, it has to do with my downstairs. It has to do with my hymen and I'm just gonna say it right out. I am not able to insert anything. I still struggle with it even after surgery, but I'll get into that. After I had my period, I always resorted to using pads. I didn't like the idea of tampons. I didn't like the idea of having to put a foreign object up there because it just was so scary to me and it was just so uncomfortable for me to think about. But I decided one day I'm going to try it. You know, I'm going to conquer my fear and I'm going to get it over with. So I grabbed my mom and yes, my mom helped me because we're just open like that. It did not go as well as we thought. It was very, very hard for me to insert it. It was very, very painful. It hurt a lot and we couldn't really even get it in all the way without me being in such like excruciating pain that I just said no I can't do this anymore I'm sorry like I can't. So then years went by I tried to insert it just wouldn't work. It always felt like I was hitting a wall and then once I hit that wall I couldn't go anywhere. It just felt like I was stuck. Yes, I am still a virgin and I am 22. Let's just get that out there. I'm a 22 year old virgin and this is why. I started to really question what was going on when I couldn't even do it myself. You know, I am the most comfortable with myself. Why can't I do this? I'm with my boyfriend now for two years and he has been a tremendous support. He has been so loving and so understanding and so helpful because of all of this that I'm going through. And he has not been mean or rude about it in any way. He understands because he went through everything with me. He went through the recovery process, you know, and still he deals with my unstable mentality because of it. We decided was I was going to get a checkup. I went to my gynecologist and I told her, I said, hey, I'm having a really hard time in inserting a tampon, inserting like anything. I just, I cannot do it. It hurts really, really bad. And I want to know what's going on down there. And I told her, I said, I am very, 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 very sensitive down there. So she said, okay, you know, I'll do it easy. But when she started to try to open me up, it hurt really, really bad. And I was like shaking. I was like moving away. I was like, no bitch, you are not gonna touch me. Like, I don't want your hands there. Cause like I'm hurting and it's not possible. Like I'm trying to tell you. And she was just like, okay, you know, you're doing good. You're fine. You know, we're just gonna see. And you know, she really couldn't tell what, what I was working with. Probably because one, I was closed up and two, I was moving around like she was like, you know, trying to harm me or something, which I knew she wasn't. It was just hurting really bad. 
So then the next thing she did was she said, okay, you know, I'm going to get a cute hip and I'm just gonna, you know, try to see if this will go in. So then she tried to put it in and it hurt really, really bad. And I said, nope, can't do it. So then, you know, she just pulled away and she said, all right, we're done. And I was so embarrassed. I was physically mortified because of how incapable I was of just doing this. She was just like, you know, don't feel bad. She's like, you are not alone. You know, there's actually more women out there like you than you think. But she's like, you are very, very, very small. We need to get you into the operating room and we need to do surgery to open you up. And basically she explained it like this. She explained it as a hymenectomy and it's exactly kind of how you would think. Okay, let's say this is your hymen, okay? And mine was closed up, like completely. Like, you know, it just wasn't going anywhere. So she cut a chunk out at the bottom here to like open me up, okay? Basically, that's what it was. She said, I will do the pelvic exam while I'm down there so that we can just kind of get it out of the way and we can see like what else is happening if you're okay down there if this is the only problem that you have she also set me up for a abdominal ultrasound just to see if my ovaries were there and if my you know uterus was okay and just to make sure that everything was working properly. So I said, okay, you know, that's fine. And we discussed everything. We discussed um, the cost and we discussed insurance and what hospital I was gonna be at. Everything came back normal, you know, it was good. A week before I made the biggest mistake of my life and I researched what a hymenectomy was and I looked up experiences that other girls have had. And that is the worst thing to do for anything is to look up on the internet hey what's what's this because you'll find out that you're gonna die pretty much they had some experiences on there that were so bad and not plausible because it freaked me out even more and i already deal with really bad anxiety so that just like freaked me out 10 times more and i was just like why am I doing this? This is so scary. What if this happens to me? And it's like, it was nothing like they said. Like it was just so chill and it was fine. I went in the morning of my surgery, you know, they signed me up and then a woman took me back and she had me get changed into a gown. Uh, she took my weight, you know, my height and she then tried to put in my IV be and I thought that was gonna be the worst part but it really wasn't she couldn't do it in my arm here she had to do it like here in my hand because I have like a big pain here in my hand so she just did it there and it wasn't as bad you know I, sh I was just like whatever like this is nothing compared to what I'm gonna have to deal with what they did was they just hooked me up to a bunch of monitors um, they gave me some Haline to kind of keep me hydrated and I just pretty much like sat in the hospital bed for a while just waiting for this to happen. I don't know if they saw my heart rate like going like fucking a million miles an hour on the screen but they came in they they gave me whatever medicine to calm me down and as soon as they did that I literally felt like the lights like went dim and like everything like slowed down and I was just like, yes, I am. <laughs> I'm so stupid. I was just like, yes, I am calm. I am ready to take this on. I don't give a shit, cut me open, bitch. Like, let's do this. And then I fell asleep because the medicine that they gave me was, made me really drowsy, but I was okay with that because I wasn't worrying anymore. So then they, came in and I had, I spoke with the anesthesiologist, I spoke with my actual gynecologist, well, who was doing it, and she said, all right, you know, just let me know. We're gonna put a tube down your throat to help you breathe. We're going to insert a catheter into you so that you, know, you can pee while we're doing it. And she's like, it might sting a little bit after you pee, or after, we're done you know when you go pee it might sting but don't really worry about that they put a little you know 
what should I call it? I don't, like a, like a hairnet basically, like a blue hairnet. And they rolled me in and my mom was there thankfully through everything. She was, you know, talking to me, she was, you know, calming me down. So then they rolled me into the room and it was very surreal. Like I was just like, oh my God, this is actually happening. Like, I was just so nervous, but I mean, they were like, all right, you know, we're gonna get off this bed, you're gonna get on the operating table, and then they moved me over, and this is literally all it was. They said, all right, Alexis, you're gonna breathe in real deep for me, real deep, and I was just like, and then I woke up in the recovery room, and I was just like, Ooh, wow like that was nothing um, I woke up and I had an oxygen mask over my face but for some reason when I woke up it looked orange I woke up and I was just like what the fuck is this over my face but like the nurse like noticed I was awake so she's like alright we're gonna take this off you and I noticed when I tried talking like my voice was like really really hoarse and it was very very hard to speak my immediate question was how did it go <laughs> She's like, oh, it went good. Everything went good. And I said, my voice is kind of scratchy or is it like my throat hurts? And so she's like, all right, you know, I'll be back. She gave me ice chips and I was just like, I was like, yes, thank you. And then my my mom came in and she was like, oh my God, I was getting so worried. And I was like, why? And she's like, because you were out for two hours after your surgery she said like it took like about like an hour and then you were out for another two hours and i was just like dang like i was tired my mom just basically told me everything that they did she said you know they actually went in and they you know here like like i explained earlier here's here it is uh they cut like a little hole down at the bottom here and she said that I actually, or I was actually so, so small that she could barely even fit like the pinky and like she was like having a struggle trying to do even that. And then she said after it's all done, she could fit two fingers in. And I was just like, oh my God, what? I had two fingers since I knew that. Gross. She said that the doctor actually recommended I get a vibrator Ugh. and I was just like that's awkward like okay thank you doctor they wheeled me over to like um the next recovery room and they had me sit up and I remember like after I woke up like I didn't feel much pain because uh, I mean I was still like under like whatever drugs they gave me but I didn't really feel anything and like what they did was like they um, lifted up my gown, they checked to just make sure like I wasn't bleeding, which I mean obviously I was because it's a s surgery and I mean what they had was they put like a p p p pad like there and then they gave me some hospital underwear and they sat me up in a different chair and they had me you know try to eat and drink but I was at the hospital in total for like nine hours i felt so so nauseous like afterwards like i i wanted to throw up everywhere but that's also probably because i wasn't eating like the whole day and i and i wasn't supposed to eat like 12 hours before i felt so sick and i was just like i just want to go home like i just want to go home and so then they they let me go home wheeled me out my little wheelchair got in the car i got home my boyfriend came over and you know he stayed with me for like the first like week or week and a half for my recovery um which again i was so thankful for it wasn't as bad as i thought it did hurt it was very painful it was very very painful to really do anything like i couldn't roll over without it hurting um i couldn't fuck the idea of trying to sit in a chair no that was impossible um being in a car really really hurt because of the bumps you know constant hitting and i was just like fuck me like this hurts really really bad even trying to walk hurt you know badly but i made it through the kind of medicine that they gave me was ibuprofen 3 and tylenol 3 i believe the medicine that they gave me really didn't help with my pain so yeah, I probably should have taken more, but I was so worried and nervous about like me getting like a 
depicted that I just didn't really want to take it as much even though it's stupid because it's fucking ibuprofen and Tylenol. My boyfriend was very, very wonderful. He, he helped me get dressed. He helped me get undressed. He helped me get in the shower. He helped me check down there. He helped me, you know, sit on the toilet. He helped me get anything that I needed basically. And it was just so nice to just have him there he was able to help me through anything with no judgment and wasn't disgusted you know he even helped me you know look and like look down there and stuff and he wasn't disgusted at all fast forward like six months i uh you know was able to insert a finger and that was like a huge milestone for me. Like I actually cried because I was so happy. That's kind of where it stopped. A lot of women have had this happen and they're able to have sex. They're able to get pregnant and have babies. But for me, it's different because I, you know, I have this fear and anxiety still in the back of my head that it's not gonna work and that I'm still way too small. And it's hard to kind of deal with that because it's like I want to be intimate I want to experience this but I can't because I have this thing blocking me and it's like it's mainly my mind it's mainly the worry about the hurting you know and stuff like that it's like something I have to practice I have to get used to the idea of it I have to get used to the feeling of something anything being up there I have to just kind of free my mind but in the same way I look at it as maybe I'm just not ready maybe it's just my my way of telling myself that hey you're not ready and don't rush it so that's what I'm gonna try to do I'm not gonna try to rush it I'm just gonna just take it day by day and do it when I'm ready you know I'm gonna do I'm gonna go about it when I'm comfortable so yeah if you're a woman out there and you're having a hard time trying to insert a tampon or anything you might want to go to your doctor and get it looked at because you might need surgery like I did if you want to talk to me on any of my social media I will link that all down in the description box below and you can talk to me about anything I am very open obviously if I'm making a story about this I'm very open to anything and if you need help with this if you're scared you know I'm here for you and I will listen and that goes for anxiety, stuttering, anything that you guys want to talk to me, I'm here for you. Also, if you like this video and if you can relate, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from moi. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.